friends, this is a Saturday afternoon, a nice time to get down to some really home cooking. And this is one of my favorite dishes, a chicken pie. Add a lot of vegetables to it, as you can see the colors. So it's going to be a healthy with white sauce, but I try to make it as healthy as possible. This is a very simple dish and it gets baked, so there's not too much of work involved with it. You set your pan up and in your pan, you basically use about two teaspoons of oil and one teaspoon of your uh, ghee. Okay, so you have that there. Heat it up a little bit. And what I have here is two tablespoons of refined flour, what we call maida. Now we're going to stir it up a little bit so we get the refined flour to cook down a little bit. So when I have this into a little bit of a paste and it's cooking down, this is the time I start adding my milk for my white sauce base. And this milk is low fat milk. I put about two cups of milk and a cup of water. So I start stirring so it doesn't form lumpy bits and it's, you can see it's starting to thicken a little bit and you keep putting your milk in so that you have a nice base to it but you have to stir really rapidly and quickly so your white sauce doesn't form too many lumps the secret is to keep going and pouring a little bit of milk as you go along so that you know you get a smooth base to it and the white sauce is getting done it gets done really quickly I usually have all my stuff chopped and kept together so that you know it's not sometimes I do it even the day before chopping the things and putting it together so when you start to do your dish it doesn't seem so laborious and you enjoy doing it and so you can see the white sauce is getting done it's the milk still going in there I'm forming a few clumps but I'm going to Stir it down so that I get a smooth white sauce. Okay, it's smoothing out a little bit. It's still very thick, so I'm adding the milk. Keep on adding the milk over here. And I put it on a slow flame. A little cream has gotten to the milk, but that's not a problem. I have to hold this side so I don't tumble over. And I've got my person who's doing the video directly for me, that's my daughter Maya and she's enjoying because she does this usually the stirring most of the time. So we cook together very often but this time she's going to be doing the video and I'm going to be doing the cooking. Say hi! Okay so this is the white sauce getting done and it's pretty smooth. Maya can I ask you to Basically, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit so that it starts to thicken. There it is. Okay. Now this is a fairly bland white sauce, so we like to spice it up a little bit. What I like to do to thicken it and to spice, spice, spice it up a little bit, I would use a little bit. You keep the heat up so that it thickens. I keep the heat up for a little while longer till it thickens. It's starting to look really nice and thick. Keep up the heat. Yeah, you can see it thickening. It's becoming more and more viscous. So it looks very nice. And when it starts to thicken up like this, this is the time I start to add the water and I turn down the heat a little bit. I'm still adding and stirring all the while. The entire process of the white sauce takes about five minutes if you've got everything ready before you get going. So it's very simple. It's a little bit of your oil, a little bit of oil, it's a little bit of ghee, it's your maida or your refined flour, it's your milk. And again I turn up the heat so it thickens a little bit. Now this would be a bland white sauce, so I've got to add my salt and pepper to it. And I do add a little green chili, so it gives it a little bit of spice, which makes it a nice and interesting dish. There we go. You can see the white sauce looking nice. I'm going to add a little bit of my salt and pepper right now. It's thickening as we increase the heat. Okay, the lumps are getting done. 
down, sides are not getting burned, the heat is up, it's thickening, it's looking nice. I'm going to turn down the heat and add what we have to add over here to our dish. Okay, can you see it? It's looking good. You could add a little cheese, but the white sauce itself has a creamy texture to it. So really, if you have enough of salt in it and it's got enough of flour and milk, it does give that creamy cheese cheesy type of taste so you don't really have to add a few more calories to it cheese, cheese is not really required can you see it's turning creamy now it's turning nice and creamy so we have it cooking for about three minutes it looks smooth okay so i'm going to turn down the heat now and this is when i'm going to add my salt there's a little bit of secret sauce in it what I'm adding over here is a soup cube. Okay, you could add any type of soup cube you like. It adds that little zinc flavor to it. So add your soup cube. And most soup cubes are a little hard, so you you kind of pull it down and you smash it a little bit. Okay, we've got a little bit of salt to be added here. When you add your soup cube, remember you've got to go slow on your salt. About half a teaspoon of salt to that. About a half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay, and again you stir away. Okay, so that's your basic so sauce that you have, your white sauce. You put all the lumps of the pepper as well as the flour. So you've got a fairly smooth white sauce here. You give it a good stir. Okay, so that's your white sauce almost done. I'm going to stir again. If you think it's thickening, you could add a little more water but I think it's good consistency just now so I'm not going to add any more water I'm not going to add any more I'm going to be adding now a little bit of green cup green chili previously I would use the whole green chili, chili and freeze it but now I've realized that you know you can have the chili in it and it adds a little bit of spice and a little nice taste to it so what I'm going to do is add the green chili just now okay, I'll add a little extra of the green chili, it's not a green chili that I've had, one green chili to this. Okay, and now the time when I add all my additives to the dish so that becomes a good dish put together. Okay, so I can decide to just turn down the heat completely, everything mixed together very well, and I'm going to add all the things that I need to add into my pie. Okay, so here I have a little cooked boiled green uh, chicken here so I'm going to be adding what I think needs to go into the pie okay so I've done diced a few things I have over here a little macaroni I have chicken which I boiled with a little bit of ginger garlic paste and a little bit of pepper and salt so here goes in my diced chicken okay after my diced chicken I'm deciding to put in a little bit of green I have broccoli here I have cauliflower which I've just kind of done in the microwave oven so I've not had to do extra washing. In one dish I've had everything done in the microwave together so there's a lot of vegetables going in there so there goes the healthy stuff. I've got corn in here so I'm going to put a little extra corn in. Okay. I've got corn then I've got also I've got carrots done and I've got a little bit of capsicum. I'm going to go slow on the capsicum because capsicum is going to make it spicy. And then, I have a little bit of macaroni that goes in here. There goes in the macaroni. You may not use all the macaroni, use some part of it. Okay, so there goes the macaroni. And we'll give this dish a good stir. Okay, macaroni is clumping a little bit. I'll ease it out. I'll pull the side of the dish. There. It's a nice mix. Can you see the color, and the white sauce, and the macaroni, and the diced chicken? It looks it's going to be a nice pot pie. It's a nice chicken pot pie. Okay, so that's done. And all I do now is to put it into my baking dish. There it goes. Into my baking dish. And I put it in the oven for about maybe about 20 minutes. Most of the things are all cooked. It just has to get browned on the surface. So there it is. My chicken pot pie. And I'm going to stick it into the oven. Okay. So 
might as well follow me and I get to be oven. It's already been on for a little while. I keep it at about 160 degrees for approximately 20 minutes to half an hour. Okay, the minute the surface is I did one a little while earlier and this is what it looks like. Okay, this is a mini one we did a little while earlier, and this is the pot pie we have. Okay, so we're gonna have that done in another half an hour. So that's our pot pie. Now when you have something with too much of flour in it, you would want to have something healthy to drink along and I think this this is a great healthy drink which I have very frequently and it's one of those fun healthy drinks which you can't go wrong with it. And everyone says today you have to have your vegetables and you have to have portions of raw vegetables and sometimes it's very laborious to be eating so much of raw vegetables. So this is the spinach I usually boil and keep together. And the spinach I put into the mixer, the liquidizer. And this is one of the nicest ways to have the kids have their vegetables. So here we go with the spinach. A whole lot of spinach goes in here. This is just boiled down spinach with a little salt. So it is pal palatable. Okay, so that's the spinach that's gone in there. This forms a really nice smoothie. Along with it, I'm going to put a whole diced tomato. So we have tomato going in there. So you have that little tart taste to it. Okay. Vitamin A, we can't forget our carrots. So let's have a little carrot get in there. Okay, so that's carrot getting in there. I thought a little apple would be interesting. I had a little diced apple in the, in the refrigerator, so I've got a little apple sitting in over there. Now we're going to form a nice smoothie with it. Okay, I'm being a little partial to the apple. The apple gets in, but not all the carrot. The carrot is a little more hard to get done, so I'm getting this done. So we have the spinach, the apple, everything all together. glasses helps so even if it's got a whole load of spinach in it if it's served in a glass like this you're going to have takers so that's your smoothie that's done okay so sit your smoothies down i think i'm going to taste the smoothie mm. very recommendable okay now when that thing is baking i'm going to do a little bit of roast chicken the roast chicken is very easy very simplistic you have your chicken over here cleaned and diced and kept it together. So this is the, the, the marinade that made for the chicken. There's pepper here, there's salt, there's ginger garlic, about a teaspoon and a half, and there's a little salt. And you know what I have over here is about a teaspoon of vinegar and a teaspoon of soya sauce. So all of this gets dunked together. So here goes the chicken, chicken pieces. I'm going to put my salt in over there. Maybe I'd require a little more salt. I'm always a little partial to pepper. I think it gives it a nice spicy flavor. Okay. There goes my ginger garlic paste. And that's the sugar here. Okay. There's got my sugar. The soya sauce and the vinegar okay and all of this gets marinated together ideally you would have to keep it at least three or four hours to taste well but 
since it's a demonstration video, this is how you get it marinated. Move it around. Probably I'm going to use a little more salt to it. So give me a while, I'll get the salt. So as you can see, I'm marinating the chicken in ginger garlic paste in a little bit of soya sauce, a little vinegar, salt, pepper and a little sugar. Don't forget the little sugar. It gives it the brownish tinge when you roasted your chicken. So once this marinade is in it, sit it down for about half an hour. So we're going to do it a little quick because this is an ongoing video. So we're going to get it onto our pan in a second. I'm using about a tablespoon and a half of oil in the pan over here. This is for the roasted chicken that I'm going to do. So this is the oil which is going to heat up a little bit. The free heated stove that I have. Once the oil is a little hot, it starts to butter a little bit. Ooh, you want a little bit of sweet stick of cinnamon. Okay. Just have the cinnamon in the oil for a minute or so, or less than that. Cinnamon gives us a very beautiful, sweet, pungent odor. Then I'm putting my onions in for a little sauteing. You don't overdo the onion. Just so that it's soft enough. You have the onion over there. While the onion is doing, getting done, I'm just going to let it get a little soft and really golden brown. So that's the onion that gets done over there. I'm going to add a little chili in over there. Big Kashmiri chilies, just open them up a little bit, twist them open a little bit, and you have the whole Kashmiri chili that goes in there. So you have that. Cooking up a little bit, getting some very pleasant smells out there. Turning down the heat a little bit, and in the meanwhile, when that's getting done, I'm going to use this time basically get my potatoes, which I've done in the microwave oven for about five minutes. And these potatoes get fairly boiled in the microwave and all they need to have done then is to be sauteed on a slow shallow pan with very little oil so that your roast potatoes that you have with your roast chicken it makes a nice interesting dish so you have your potatoes there those are a bit hot so I'm going to give this a stir around there here once the onions get a little better done, I'm going to put in the capsicum and the capsicum and the green onions that I have cut out here. That's the potato getting done in the meanwhile. So I'm utilizing all the time that I have to do something effectively and efficiently. And when I get, it gets too hot for my hands, I go back to stirring. I use all the time that I have to do something efficiently. my onion base over there for the roast and I come back to my potatoes but my hands won't burn in between. And once this potato is done I'm going to walk you across to the oven to check whether our dish is ready and if it's ready we'll take it out of the oven and sit it out. Okay one more potato to go. All you need to do is put in the, the, the potatoes in a plastic bag, punch a few holes in it with a fork, both into the potato as well as into the plastic bag and keep it in for about 5 minutes. You get very well done boiled potatoes. You don't have to sit it down on a stove and put it in a pressure cooker. It gets done equally well in a microwave. That's my potatoes which are peeled when they were very very hot so I've got a little bit of thermal injury to my fingers but I guess it's not too bad. So let's walk across. We're going to get this one more stir. It's looking very nice. So this is the time I'm going to add a little bit of my capsicum, my greens, and the green onions. Okay. Before I add in. And that's Chloe who's coming in and out because she's smelling a little chicken around over here. 
that's our home pet, Chloe. She's been very naughty today because she messed the house a little bit. So I'm really very mad at her. Okay, so that's going to be there for about two or three minutes before I add in the chicken. To cut them a little long. Okay, so that's the potato getting done. Some people use are comfortable using the skin of the potato and they call it the jacket potato. So if that's still comfortable with you, you can choose to use your potato that way. So that's the skewer with your basic stuff. Once you get this done over here, you get a little oil to the pan and start using the potato. chicken on the bed of the capsicum there goes the chicken out there and all the sauces that have been been marinating in for the last hour or so okay, that's what gets done keep it cooking for about 15 minutes Some are bigger and some are smaller, but it makes the dish interesting. So that's how potato is getting done there. We're going to turn down the heat a little bit to start the potato peel and go across to see whether our pie is ready. Okay, so we have pie sitting out here. Oh, it looks a beautiful golden brown. That's the pie that we did earlier. Earlier, I'm going to use this to take the pie out. So this is the chicken pot pie, and that's how it looks. It's got a beautiful, beautiful golden brown. So we'll sit at the table. And here was the earlier smoothie that we made. And that's the golden brown pie at the table. Cover it up so that we don't have anything drop into it. Okay. We have that getting done. The chicken I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit so that it stews a little and then I flip it over. Hi Chloe! So we've got our potatoes done. They are beautiful golden brown. We're going to just sprinkle them with a little bit of pepper and salt. So this is a sprinkling so going on. So just please. The gas is on. We're going to do a little sprinkling of the pepper and salt onto the surface of the golden brown potatoes. Toss them about a little bit. They get coated beautifully. You see the beautiful pale golden potatoes sprinkled with a little bit of freshly ground pepper and a little salt. Now let's look at another dish over here. We have our potatoes done. Uh, chicken. The chicken done. Okay, it's a beautiful golden brown color and I'm going to be plating it just now. Okay, so we have everything done and I'm going to be plating it. It was sitting on the fire at the stove for about 20 minutes. You can see all the beautiful sauces that they have. This is the chicken that we have. Plated. We've got small pieces, we've got medium pieces, there's a huge leg piece over here, there's a beautiful cherry that's around it, and here there's some more pieces of the 
beautiful chicken. These are artificial onions there. You put everything. I'm going to put everything around so that it gets coated beautifully. Some of the chili. If anyone likes to have the chili along with the chicken, they're welcome to. That's a little plate around over here. Put more masala. Chicken dish. Golden brown potatoes, veggies that we have, pairs very well together. So this is the dish that we put together. It's really very easy to do. All you need to do is marinate it for about an hour. As I said, the ginger garlic paste with a little bit of vinegar, a little soya sauce, sugar, and salt. So that's our chicken dish. Okay. I've cut a little bit of fruit. There isn't too much available thanks to the lockdown, but this is a little bit of banana grown in our garden here, and the mango, which is also from one of the gardens around over here. So let's take it on the table. And so we have our table set. Here we have our meal. So our meal is. A chicken pot pie, a roast chicken with potato. That's another big dish that we did earlier. This is a little chocolate ice cream, and I got to give you a tip. If you like your chocolate ice cream spiked a little bit, there's nothing better than Tia Maria, which spikes up your chocolate ice cream. So if you put in a teaspoon of Tia Maria on your chocolate ice cream, you have a delicious coffee flavor to your chocolate ice cream. Oh that's a lot of Tia Maria, but it's going to be tasting really very good. So that's our meal that we put together. It's very simple to do. It's a lovely Saturday evening meal. And I hope you'll take away something from these recipes. Thank you for the opportunity. We're great doing it. And this, of course, is the smoothie we made of spinach. Thank you.